What's up everyone, it's your boy Shaki here, coming to you with another episode of A Twisted Path to Renown. Today we're going to be talking about ammunition specifically. I know I've covered this a little bit in my workshop video, which you can check out, but I think there's a little bit to be talked about when it comes to specific ammos and what you can get out of those, as well as the different types of tools that you'll need for it. I would definitely say I'm going to err again on the side of don't use a 38, even if it's a fully kitted 38 ammo, you're probably not going to have a very good time with it at 128 damage however if that's something that you want to do because you can only acquire the 38s from the trader this might not be a video for you as well because you're probably not going to be able to get some of these things that you need to craft the highest tier 38 possible but however there are some things that you can tweak to change certain things we've got different attributes like bleeding and fracture chance there won't be any stun chance that's only going to be for the musketoon but i would highly suggest you do not use that weapon the reload time is just way too long and the accuracy for me there's a lot to be desired there but the hollow point is going to give you very high fracture chance and a very high bleed chance however it is going to be at the behest of a bit of damage there you do notice that there is going to be a difference between the velocity as well so the velocity is going to be a, a little bit slower so you're going to have to lead your shots a little bit more and not too much difference in the difference for a silencer or the hearing radius in general but there is a bit of a difference there so always check the result whenever you're ready and you're looking to craft the type of ammo that you're looking for but again i'm always going to err on the side of wanting to get the best out of my bullets and especially get the best out of my gun so the weapon durability impact is very important to me as well as the spread adjustment the spread adjustment is something that i always want to take care to look at especially if i'm looking at ammo that i'm picking up off the ground and another one would be the penetration class so you're obviously going to get a bit better penetration whenever there's things that aren't buffed in other regards so a hollow point there's going to be almost no penetration for that but it is going to give you that chance of bleed and fracture so depending on who you're fighting against if you've got somebody that's got some sort of armor on you're going to want to go for those headshots but for me personally even though there is a bit better damage on this i'm still going to be going for the better velocity and the, the lower bleed and fracture possibility because as you can see we've got a different spread adjustment here and a difference in our durability oh maybe a, okay so no durability impact difference there is going to be a small stun chance as well but again i'm still looking for that higher velocity i want to go for that higher accuracy and i definitely want that penetration class because depending on who you're facing off against either it's a player or a boss you're either going to want to make those headshots or you're going to want to hit that chest and you want to get through that armor in very few shots that you can and the major component here is obviously going to be that spread adjustment so here's the components that i usually like to use smokeless is really important to me but one thing that i noticed with shotgun ammo is that when you shoot a shotgun there is no such thing as smokeless so unfortunately you just have this big plume of smoke in front of you but that doesn't happen with rifles so that's definitely a good cause to be using it you don't have to worry about readjusting your shots if you have smokeless you won't be seen nearly as often if you're hiding in a bush or in the trees it's very difficult to spot you from certain distances especially if you are hidden but if you see smoke you're going to be the most obvious target for your opponent to be able to notice i don't worry about the lubes here but you can play around with it however with the higher tier jacketed you're not going to want to use lubes at all because it's not required and then if you go up to full metal jacket we get an even better spread adjustment i'm just trying to show you guys a little bit of the differences here so 134 and i yeah you can't even use hollow points so that's why i have it at rounded nose i think i accidentally put it into jacketed but full metal jacket is what you want to have your weapons at it won't give you any sort of bleed or fracture chance but again the damage is going to be more maximized as well as the speed the the radius for you being heard is going to obviously be louder but in terms of the spread adjustment adjustment it's just there's nothing better than that as you can see there's a little bit better of a drop when we're using a full metal jacket but again i would always suggest to stay away from 38s if you can ever get a chance to get a 44 or a 45 you should always drop your 38 the 38s just aren't there the spread adjustment is just not that great and i just don't i don't recommend it so basically from 38 to 45 we're going to have pretty much the same attributes there's nothing that's going to be changed lead 10 alloy is always going to be the play but if you need to do lead it's not that big of a difference there's just obviously going to be the spread adjustment piece that's going to be a big problem for me and the penetration class and obviously the damage dealt but it's it's pretty negligible the penetration class is still important to me so these are the things that i use the highest tier that you can find and if we're talking differences in the quality of powder that we use i still think that you're going to want to go with number five it's it's definitely a rare item 
But if you do go into your barters, there are places that you can find this stuff. You can absolutely find the cards required to get you all the things you need. Bullet press, as well as number five right here, brass sheets, lead tin alloy, all of that stuff that you require to be able to make it without even going into raid to do those heavier tier locations. Let me try and find my way back here. So 44 to me is one of my favorite sweet spots for a sniper rifle, um, especially a mid-tier sniper rifle. Obviously you won't get the same damage as you would on a 45, but the recoil is actually quite a bit more significant on a 45 compared to a 44. So whenever you're using a scoped rifle, which I do recommend only a four times scope, definitely check out uh, the videos that I've got posted about 44s and about 45s. Um, but if we're talking about the cream of the crop here, we've got to go with the 39.9. And same thing, the only difference is, is that we're going to have spitzer ammo rather than hollow point. Some of these things are going to obviously change the bullet cover, but you want to have brass. Spitzer is going to be really good. These are one shot kill. If, you, if the opponent doesn't have armor, you hit him in the chest, that's, that's a kill right there for sure. And even with the penetration class being a 10, there's only a certain type of vitality and mixture of armor that's going to protect you from getting killed from this bullet. So the spread is actually the, the best it can be. There's almost no drop at all. We're already at the 225 meter mark and basically the render distance is right here. So the bullet drop is pretty negligible and we're talking about an insane amount of speed. So in terms of a silenced rifle, this bullet is definitely gonna be a uh, top class. Even though the muffler does slow down the, the velocity a little bit with a muffler gun, this bullet is is it's not going to matter you're you're still going to be hitting your target from a very far distance and you're going to be doing a lot of good damage again this is not going to give you the bleed or fracture chance but that's just me with a gun so accurate you can hit those headshots you can be opportunistic with your shots wait for the player to stop or be still and hit that headshot and even if you do hit him in the chest, it's, it's still going to take two shots. You're not going to want to hit somebody, run away, rotate, and try to just hope that the bleed or the fracture kills them. Because you're not going to be able to find that body again, in my opinion. So for me, the bleed and the fracture with the highest tier, it's, not, it's a non-issue. I, I definitely want to be hitting these high damage bullets and not worrying about bleed or fracture. Unless we're running into a situation where you don't have the right components that you need. And then we got to go down to a jacketed, probably a round nose, just so that you can get the, uh, the the fracture and the bleed chances. And if we're talking about hollow point, we're going to have a spread adjustment that's going to be a little bit different. Not too much of a difference in the, the other attributes, but I still always suggest to get that Spitzer bullet molding tool. Sandpaper, always try to find that because that's going to be a big bottleneck, especially because you're taking up 166 centimeters off of those every time you craft seven. But as you can see, I do definitely appreciate the finer things in life and I'm always trying to strive towards getting more and more of the better ammo. Now we're going to quickly gloss over the 60 load. Um, I think that the slug shotgun pellet is probably better used in a different area. So I wouldn't ever suggest using this, but if you are going to go with it, I would say normal charge, high quality powder. And again, the drop off is just too quick for a rifle that you want to be using to hit your targets and 152 damage for how, how slow it is to reload those guns. I just don't see the Muscatoon being that viable. So I just highly suggest using these resources elsewhere. I mean, a small piece of paper isn't really that big of a deal, but these two other pieces could be used in much more effectiveness in other ways. So we'll quickly be moving on to the slug. Now you always wanna use fiber wad rather than felt wad. The difference with that is going to be pretty big on the spread. At first I thought felt wad was going to be the more important piece because it is higher tier quote unquote. But as you can see there's almost no difference uh, in the, the attributes unless you go into a gun and you look at the fiber versus uh, felt. This is the fiber one but the felt is going to be the spread is going to be a little bit further out it's going to be a bit wider it's not a huge difference but it could make the difference between missing somebody's head and getting that headshot so i always suggest getting fiber wad for the slugs however if we go to bolo 
Polo is also very viable. I know a lot of people actually quite enjoy the bleed chance for that one, as well as the fracture. There is a difference, obviously. The, the slug is going to give you pretty good fracture with no bleed, whereas the bolo is going to give you a bit more fracture and a whole lot of bleed. But again, as you can see, we've got a pretty major drop off here. So if you're using a shotgun with a scope, the bolo is going to only give you so much range and it's not going to give you nearly as much damage. So again, I do always suggest going with the slugs because headshot's king in this game. But if you want to do some sort of damage to a player or to a group of players and just be a nuisance, maybe maybe switching to the bolo is good. And this is where the difference between felt makes sense. Look at the spread adjustment. 15% to 0%. So you want to hit that felt wad for anything above a slug. Anything, anything with more than one pellet inside of your shotgun shell you absolutely want to use the felt as you can see the spread adjustment is pretty severe but again if we're going to slugs just use fiber fiber is pretty easy to find you can buy it at one of the traders the the general trader here he's going to generally have it there so you don't have to worry about that component you can craft it it is something that is possible to craft and you can definitely find strips of cloth no problem but again, I would suggest just sticking with the slugs, in my opinion, and brass shot shell if you can, because there is going to be a difference. I know I didn't really go into it with the other ammo types, but you will notice a difference with the weapon durability, as well as the penetration class. And uh, if you're going to be using a gun that you've got coveted, either 95% or something that's higher percentage, you're going to be able to use that gun for longer if you use a higher tier ammo class uh, shell. We can also talk, look at that between aluminum, so difference in penetration class, as well as obviously a difference in the weapon durability. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the higher percentages mean. Obviously, the, the lower the percentage, the better the durability impact. I don't exactly know what metric this measures, but basically you just want to always make that a lower number. And obviously, the brass is going to give you that lower number. Now, if we're talking about arrows... We're, we're going to be doing a difference of opinion here. It depends on what play style you have. Obviously, you're going to get a little bit further with the, the oak versus... Or a little bit further with the cedar versus the oak. However, I do like the oak for uh, a little bit of a different reason. Um, and that's obviously the penetration class. And then turkey. As you can see here, it's going to be giving you a bit of a difference in spread adjustment. So maybe goose is the play, um, but turkey is definitely going to give you more damage, as well as a broadhead is going to give you way less distance and a little bit more of a chance for bleed and fracture. Again, I don't necessarily suggest using the bow and arrow because even the, the pullback on the bow is extremely loud. There's no audio drop off, so it's very easy to tell when somebody's trying to shoot you with a bow from the bushes. And it's one of those things that even if you do get hit, the damage is so low that it's not really going to make, make much of a difference to me. It's pretty easy to run away and, and to, to figure out where this player is. Um, the big thing here is obviously going to be the obsidian arrowhead versus the flint or the steel. Obviously, we're going to be getting a higher bleed chance and a better damage. So definitely keep an eye on that in terms of the ammo that you want to be using for your arrows if you choose to do so. The obsidian is again found with our friend here, Edward Layton. Oh, uh, no, he's Edgar Mills is what I should be saying. Edgar Mills is selling you the obsidian that you need for your arrows. But again, the amount of effort and resources that you require to make a longbow that's of, sta of good standing, the horn stave, is not that easy to craft. You need uh, three deer horns to make nine of these, a bunch of tallow, a bunch of glue, and a hand file. And it just, for whatever reason, I don't know why, but uh, you can't pick up your arrows after you use them. So the amount of arrows you require to kill something, even though you're not getting such a high accuracy weapon um, and also a very loud, quote unquote, stealth weapon, I just don't see the bow and arrow being of use to anybody. I also don't really rate the pepper box. I know a couple of people might be saying that this is something that they would use, but I just don't suggest it. It's a 38 ammo type that you're going to be using. The spread on it is not that great, and the bullet drop is 
it's just gross it's not it's not a fun gun to use all right guys so hopefully that was helpful to you um let me know if you have any questions about this but we've got pretty much everything right here that you need so if you're looking at your 39.9 you're saying oh okay so what, what's the recipe to pick something that i'm missing so if there's something in red you can just click it but unfortunately there's no recipe for this specific powder measuring tool so if we go to something right here so okay we've got a black walnut log that's uh that's missing from a recipe we can click it and it'll bring you down to the woodworking right here and it'll show you exactly what you need to create that tool so if we've got something like uh, brass sheets and we're running low on brass sheets, you can click it and it'll show you the uh, what you need to create that recipe piece for the future. Thanks so much for watching. And if you guys have any other questions about something that I might have missed or something that I could cover next, please do let me know. And as always, please hit that like, subscribe and comment in the section below for that sweet algorithm juice. And we'll catch you again on the next one. Ciao for now.